Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm going to carry on now with the uh, first turn of the Guards counterattack from Advanced Squad Leader. First thing we have to talk about is a correction here. This guy does not get concealment because if you check the line of sight to this hex, it just misses this side here. It was a error on my part. Other than that, no difference. Okay, recap. Prep fire is done. These guys fired no effect here. They had some effect here. Their shots went uh, across the way. They had rates of fire invoked or caused the sniper to activate and pinned or a correction broke the machine guns crew here. In here, uh, the leader is pinned and uh, the half squad with the light machine gun, one of them is broken. So what we're gonna do now is get into the movement phase. First thing, if you remember here, the covered arm marker. It's the end of the phase in which the covered arc was set, so therefore it comes off. For example, if this were the movement phase and machine gun fire were fixed, well, at the end of the movement phase, it would come off. All right, movement. First things first, we're going to start over here on the left. The Russians see an opportunity to get to this building. Medium machine gun that's covering this road has been uh, not temporarily put out of action by the sniper. Still has a light machine gun that can fire across this way, but we're going to try to, uh, well, we're going to try to get over there the best way the Russians know how, and that's simply by, well, going across the street. So we're going to start here with these guys. They're not, you know, they could try and run around here, but this heavy machine gun's going to stop that. So they're going to come across here. So this guy here first is going to bypass this hex on this side. Each vertex. You want to see if his line of sight or if his uh, concealment comes off. It's a free check from here. This point, normally it's at the middle of the hex, as you know. And this point to there, and it comes off. And they can see that. He is a first line squad. It's no surprise. I saw him set up. All right. Movement uh, factor expenditure of one because they're paying the cost along one or two contiguous hex sides. They're paying the cost of the other terrain. A little bit faster. Expends one movement factor and the German says that there's no uh, shots at them. Next, he decides to bypass hex M4 along... Uh, this hex side here. At this point, does he want to shoot? If he does, the the distance is to the center of the hex he's passing, so it's three. You know, in case there's some weird uh, counts going on. Anyway, he looks up and he says, you know what? I'm not quite sure if I nick past there or not from here up into that spot. So I'm not going to shoot because if he shoots... You check line of sight, and, uh, well, it just, just may or may not clip there, but I want to be certain. So I think he's going to go out in the road, and sure enough, he does for a total of three. Recapping, then two, he started bypassing here for one, bypassed there for two, and now there for three. At this point, he decides to shoot. Let's see what happens. Looking at things now from the German point of view, we can see that we have the guy firing here, just marked with first fire. He's gonna be firing a total of three hexes away. It's all normal range at him. I just put the little target marker on there just so for viewers at home so you can follow along. Normal range, uh, firepower of seven on the six column. He is, DRM is minus one for moving in the open and minus one for non-assault movement, for a total of six minus two. Let's see what happens. I've rolled a natural five, take away two is three. Notice that the red die is three, therefore he has not gotten um, a rate of fire. Let's check what happens. Going to the sixth column, down to the number three, we see K slash two. K by itself means casualty reduction, and the two means that the survivors have a plus two morale check. Let's check the results. We can see the first line squad there is replaced by the first line half squad. Both of the numeral one and the both the numeral one is encased in a box, in a square. 
The survivors get a plus two morale check. We roll a 10. 10 plus two is 12. 12 is much more than seven. Remembering that the ELR is three, we note that 12 is, well, it's more than three, more than seven. Therefore, not only did they break, but they, uh, they failed their ELR test. Let's apply the results. The counters are offset to show the results. The firepower coming in was six. Half of six is three. The next column down is two on the firepower, so there's two residual firepower in that hex. The first line squad was casually reduced to a first line half squad. They failed their ELR check when they did the morale check. Now they are a conscript half squad broken in the street under desperation morale. Let's carry on with the movement. The movement carries on. We're going to carry on down here. One squad at a time is going to come across here. But um, you may ask yourself, well, what about these guys shooting up the street? They've only first fired. Well, that's true, but any fire after that has to be the nearest uh, enemy unit or in line with the nearest enemy unit. There are units two hexes away, so anybody three hexes or more away cannot be shot at with subsequent first fire. These guys are going to lose their uh, concealment right away. So let's just uh, take one at a time. Always move one at a time unless you leave. Unless you need a leader. All right. Trying to avoid being seen out in the street from over here. The bypass move of this for one. No shots. Into L3 for two. And no shots. And into K4 for a total of four. Guy in the top floor can't see him. The guy down here can't see him. But the guy underneath, he can see him as well. He's got a decision to make. Does he shoot at him now? Or does he fire across out in, or is he going to save his fire for what's going to come across the street? Well, across the street is still covered by a squad upstairs and a squad back here, so he decides he's going to shoot. Let's see how what happens here. I've cleared the counters out of the way to show everything. You got the first fire marker here. The other guys are just off the board for a second. The guys are shooting at or are by next to the target marker. So he's firing with the light machine gun, firepower of three. Doubled at point blank to six. DRM plus three for the building, minus one for non-assault movement is a total of six plus two. He shoots. He rolls a seven. Seven plus two is nine. Nine on the six column is just under a PTC. It is no effect, but wait. There's more. Yes, he got rate, so that means he can fire again at full firepower. Remembering that it costs two movement factors to move in there, the guy in the light machine gun says, you know what, we're going to do it again, full firepower. So it's another six plus two attack. Now, irrespective of the results of this attack, there will be no better shots. He won't, like, if he gets rate, he won't be able to shoot at him. Also, uh, notice that he's a light machine gun and his covered arc is not fixed. He can shoot in any direction again. So, let's roll the dice. Nine. Nine plus two is eleven. We know that's not enough. So that will uh, have no effect. However, there will be some residual. Let's go apply the results. Remembering it was a firepower of six, halves down to a three, goes down to the two columns, so there's two residual firepowers there. We're sitting to see the power of residual. If the Russians want to move into there or there, they're going to be shot at for free without anybody. And guess what? Residual firepower does not cower. The Russians, they're going to carry on the same path. Next guy moves there for one for no shot. For two for no shot. For four, and he's going to suffer a residual attack. Point to note. He's using two movement factors in there, and there's a residual. Residual only attacks on the first movement in, unless you make yourself more vulnerable. For example, you move in with assault movement. I don't know. Make yourself more vulnerable. Have a look at the rules. Okay, so he gets hit with a two DRM plus two attack. Five. Five plus two is seven. We better check that one on the charts. And it just missed. 
The residual firepower had no effect. All right. Next guy. There's no other shots. The, uh, the guy underneath there, he could shoot at him with subsequent first fire, but realizing he can fire in the full defensive fire phase at anybody adjacent, if he's only marked with first fire, he's holding off because he thinks there's more coming. And he's right. Let's get rid of that. This guy, for one, in bypass, two, and four. He knows there's an attack for free. Nine. And then, oh, by the way, if that residual firepower were to cause a sniper to invoke, it'd just be a bad day for the Germans. All right. Uh, before we get moving, I'm just going to shuffle or make sure the counters are all straight and get ready for the next move. What would life on the Eastern Front be without a human wave attack? So what's happening here is these units here are gonna do a human wave to try to get across the street to get into here to these guys. There's a few things you have to do. Uh, you gotta mark the direction that's either gonna be along a hex grain or a hex, uh, hex uh, an alternate hex grain. This would be a hex grain, so it's going along the direction of, a, you know, just straight down. Or the alternate hex lane, hex grain, is going along basically the vertices. All right, so you're going in one of 12 directions. Uh, so basically, you mark it like that as a reminder. Now, you need a certain number of units, but key is you need uh, a leader. The leader is in here, if we remember. There he is. The leader could be a 6 plus 1, for all you know. Um, you need a minimum of, uh, I think it's three hexes. They have to be adjacent to each other. Uh, anyway, it's all in the rules. It's very specific, but I've got enough here. I've got three. Sit. I got three there, three there, three there. They're all continuous. They got their targets over here, and basically they're going to rush out in the street and try to whack these guys here. We say, well, what's what's the advantage of doing a human wave? Uh, there's a few. First of all, look at the the counter itself. Uh, I'm zooming a little bit. Make sure it's in focus. There you go. All members of the human wave have a morale level that goes up by one. Point to note: never goes above ten. Also, they all have eight movement factors. They are NA to pin. They don't pin. If you roll equal to their uh, morale level, they're fine. And their heat of battle is no effect. It's not applicable. So that's maybe why you want to do it. So uh, you can get across the street. And it's a really good way to get your uh, conscripts out and up and running. You grab some, you know, you get some commissar and he rallies the troops. And you send these four, two, six guys who suddenly now from three to go to eight movement factors. They go from six to seven morale. All right. So how do they move? First thing is, they all move uh, in what they call impulse movement. So they all move in the same direction, and they expend the same number of movement factors. Uh, they use the same number of movement factors. So if one of the units has to use two movement factors, the rest have to use one. Well, they all use two. All right, so they got the direction set. They're going over here. They're going to make the first movement. I'll make the first movement and we'll see what happens. There we can see they moved out and they went, basically as we look at the camera here, they went up one and to the left. So E4 went to F4, he went to here, he went to here. So how many movement factors? Two if is the right answer because F3 went here to G4 for two movement factors. So even though normally it'd spend one, they're all spending two to go there and two to go there. So. It's now up to the, you know, they expend their two movement factors and it's time for the German to declare their fire. They'll do that now. The first German to fire is going to be this guy here. He's firing two hexes away at the guys moving in the open. He has firepower four. Uh, range is two, so it's four. DRM minus one for moving in the open. Minus one for non-assault movement is four minus two. Roll the dice, it comes to 8. 8 minus 2 is 6 on the 4 column. 6 on the 4 column, you can see there is a normal morale check. There are 3 six, two, eights. Let's roll and check the results. We remember human wave, morale levels plus 1, so instead of the printed 8, they are all level morale level of 9. Normal morale check. First guy rolls a 4. He passes. Next guy, 
rolls a five, going the wrong direction, but he passes. Next one rolls a 10. 10 is one greater than his morale level of nine, so one of the squads does break. Let's apply the results. We see there is a residual of two. One of the units is broken and under DM, as we can see here, and the remainder are still part of the human wave. Now, remembering that it took two movement factors to go in there, he's going to fire again. There is no other Russian that's closer. He expended two movement factors to go in there, so he's going to fire subsequent fire, so half firepower of two, the same DRM of minus two. So two minus two. Rolls a six, which is the rush or the sniper activation. Six minus two is four. Four on the four column is a one morale check. Let's apply the results. Here we are. We have, oh, he's not low ammo. He's DM. DM'd. So he's not part of the human wave. His morale is as printed, an eight. These guys have morale level of plus one, and it's a plus one morale check, so it's going to offset. His magic number is seven. He rolls two dice. Ah, he gets a seven. No further adverse effects. The next two guys, they're looking for eights as their magic number. I'll roll twice. First one rolls an eight, remembering that pin is NA. He passes. The next one rolls a four. He passes as well. Also, finally, we have the sniper result. Let's see if the Russian sniper activates. I rolled a three, it does not activate. Let's reset the results. So the results have been applied. They're marked with final fire. Next up, the German decides to fire point blank. The two, four, seven, half squad is gonna shoot out into H4. All right, let's uh, apply the markers and see what happens. Okay, there's the target marker who's shooting at. Fire power is two, point blank makes it a four. DRM of minus two. Four minus two. Rolls a seven comes to a five. Five on the four column comes to a one morale check. Let's roll for the results. Plus one morale check. We know the broken guy's DM, but it doesn't matter. He needs to roll a seven. He rolls a four. He's okay. The next two guys have morale of eight. Uh, human wave makes it a morale of nine. Plus one morale check means they need an eight. First one rolls a seven. He's fine. Next one rolls a six. He's fine, but he did invoke the German sniper activation number. German rolls a three. No effect. As before, he's, he's, he, they use two movement factors. He's going to fire again. They're the closest ones, and he's going to try to get them again. So instead of resetting, let's just shoot. We know it's a firepower of two, point blank to four, subsequent first fire down to two. DRM minus two. Two minus two. Rolls a six, sniper number, down to a four. Four on the two column is a one morale check. Let's roll those results. These one morale checks are becoming quite the rage. First guy needs a seven. Five, he passes. Next needs an eight. He rolls an eight. Pin is NA. He passes. Next one. Oh, he rolls an 11. He breaks. But we also hit the Russian sniper number. Does it activate? Threes are wild, and he does not. Let's apply the results. All right, results have been applied, and the Germans are really pouring the fire on. They've shot from here with a full squad, a half squad here. Now this full squad up here is going to fire at the same target. We know he's a four. We know it's a minus two. We've, we've rolled these a few times. All right, let's roll the results. Not so lucky this time. He rolls a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Eight on the four column is off the chart. So it is basically no effect. Now, he's really got to stop these guys. So he got to try to keep these guys alive. So he's going to fire again with final fire. This time again, four. Halves down to a two for a subsequent first fire. DRM minus two. Better result this time. He rolls a three. Our correction is a five. Take away two. He rolls a three. See, I was right. Three on the two column. Uh, three on the two column. One, two, three is a one morale check. I think we're hitting a 
We're hitting a theme here. All right, let's roll these results. The all too familiar plus one morale check. I'll do the two broken guys first. Seven plus one is eight, equals his morale. He's broken, so no pinning, he's good. Next guy rolls an eight, plus one is a nine. He will casually reduce. And the human waves guy rolls a seven. Seven plus one is eight. He matches his morale, does not pin. Let's apply the results. At this point, the German declares he's not making any further shots on those two movement factors, so the Russians will carry on with their wave attack. Let's move on to the next expenditure of movement factors. The human wave carries on. They went sort of uh, juked a bit left on the first movement for two, and now they're juking a bit right. They're all going the same uh, same direction of the same number of hexes and expending the same number of movement factors. Cost him one in the street. We know it cost him two to go there. This guy, it costs two to enter there, but since there's a full-size unit there, it's an infantry overrun, so it costs a total of four movement factors. That means so far the human wave has expended uh, six movement factors. Of course, this time the Russian or correction, the Germans are going to shoot. Let's uh, see what they do for their shots. First thing that's going to happen is the squad in here is going to fire into his own hex at the moving unit. He's already marked with final fire, so this is a type, a special type of fire called final protective fire. It's tripled for point blank in the same hex, so that comes to six, and it's halved down to three. So it's on the two column. It's going to be a firepower two, DRM plus two, three for the stone building, minus one non-assault movement, but it's also going to serve as a normal morale check for the two, four, seven, half squad. Rolls a six. Well, he passes his morale check. Uh, six plus two on the two column is eight, is no effect, but it does hit the Russian sniper number. Going to check to see if the sniper activates, and it does. It is what we call a baby sniper. So this is what we have to do first. First, we're going to mark the uh, hex with the appropriate residual firepower. Remember, it was two, so he's going to have a one residual in there. There is the German sniper. Because it did activate, let's get that in focus. Because it did activate, they could choose to move it, but let's face it, you're right in the gist of everything here. So he's going to roll two dice, one for direction, a red for direction, white for distance. Four, four. All right, so he's there. He's going to go four hexes. One, two, three, four. Right to here. He's going to go to the nearest enemy unit. And looking around, it looks like it's going to be this unit here. I am going to have to check the rules, but I don't think that the pin result will happen. I'll be right back. So consulting the results, uh, the sniper does go there. However, the, uh, for the human wave participants, it says that they are exempt from pinned results. It was a pin attack. And therefore, they are, they are um, uh, exempt. So, he's fired. Is he going to fire again? Well, you know what? He passes. Uh, he has four opportunities to four movement factors to move in. He can fire FPF up to four times as long as he survives. It's probably going to break. But uh, he decides, you know what? I don't think I want to. He's... Uh, Probably shouldn't have made that first attack anyway. But anyway, that's just to show what you can do. So the next guy, yoink, he's going to shoot. And he's going to shoot at the guy out in the open. The guy in the open has the leader. They used four movement factors. It's point blank. So it's firepower of four. Two point blank goes to four. DRM minus two. So a four minus two attack. Rolls an eight. Eight minus two is six. That's a normal morale check. Let's check the results. Here's the guys about to be tested. Remembering that the uh, uh, human wave guys, morale level goes by one, goes up by one. Leader or nobody can go past ten. So normal morale check. First one <laughs> rolls a ten. He's lucky. He passes. Now he does get to use his uh, leadership on the other guys. Their morale level is nine. It now goes to eleven. Basically, try not to roll 
A12. Famous last words. A3. No effect. Ah, next guy. An 8. No effect. Finally, rolls a 9. No effect. They were point blank. He's going to shoot again. They used four movement factors. Next one's going to be a 2 minus 2. Rolls the dice. Ha, 6 minus 2 is 4. He also rolls a sand. 4 on the 2 column is a 1 morale check. So the leader, his magic number is now 9. Last time he rolled a 10. A 6. I'm going to keep track of these. That'll be German snipers activated and Russian activated. So one Russian's been activated so far. Uh, and one German. Okay, so he rolled a six, he passes. Next guys don't roll 12s. They're good. <laughs> Famous last words, he's good. Rolls a five, he's good. And the last guy rolls an 11. <laughs> wow, two 11s, they're good. We've had two snipers. First one was the Russian. Rolled a four, no effect. Then the German. He rolled, yeah, rolled a four, no effect. Use, remember, they used four movement factors to move up in there. He's got a chance, to, you know, if he gets a good roll, he could actually wipe these guys out. So he's going to FPF shoot. Firepower of two, DRM minus two. Ah, bad news, rolls a nine. Remembering that an FPF shot is also a morale check, that squad breaks, leaves some residual out in the street, uh, etc. So let's uh, apply the results. All right, he FPF'd, took the final, mar final marker off him because he's broken and DM'd. He fired out here, left a whole bunch of residual. You see the residuals really piling up out there. Um, German's not done yet. He's going to do some more shooting. And he's basically, the guy back here is going to try to blast away at some of the guys that are coming through. He's going to fire into here in his own hex. I'll mark it, and then I'll talk us through it. So we've got the guys laid out to show who's uh, who's shooting. So we have a total of three squads and two light machine guns. So we have 12 plus 6 is 18. That comes up to the 16 column. Uh, we got the minus 2 leader. He's going to direct the shots. They're firing up here where the number 1 is, the, the residual. Uh, you might think, well, it's going to hit your own guys. Well, the, the beauty of firing now is that it'll affect only those people expending movement factors. The only ones doing that in there right now is the half is the uh, full squad that came in, so it's going to be sixteen plus three for the building, minus two for the leader, minus one for non assault movement. So the firepower of sixteen, even. This is a powerful shot, and he rolls a seven. The machine guns lose rate. Let's check the on the sixteen column rolls a seven. Ah, get my finger into focus. So follow the seven across, it comes here to two morale check. Let's roll the results. So here's our guy, remembering he's in a human wave. His morale level is nine, that's a two morale check, so his magic number is seven. Roll the results. Oh, too bad for the Russians. That's one greater. He breaks. Let's apply the result. So we can see what happened here. The residual from 16 goes to eight. So if anybody moved in there, there's another eight movement factors. They're broken. They're broken in the street, and he's out there. Remember, the uh, that human wave has used six movement factors so far. They would need four to get into there and four to get into there if they kept coming. But they don't have enough. So basically, we know that they're going to be done moving there. This guy, knowing that he may be able to advance into close combat there, decides to say, you know what? I'm going to shoot these guys while I got a chance. So he's going to shoot, and in so doing, he's going to reveal who he is. Let's uh, apply the markers and see what happens. A reminder of the stack. Two squads, one of which has a light machine gun directed by a negative one leader. So firepower of eight and three is 11, doubled for point blank to 22. Firepower is on the 20 column. DRM up three for the building, minus one for non-assault movement, Minus one for the leader, so it's a 20 plus one attack. No, they roll a six, which is the Russian sniper. And again, keeping track by putting one there. That's maybe something we could do. So a six plus one on the 20 is a seven. Let me go to the seven. We have to look all the way over to this white column here. On the 20 is a two morale check. 
All right, let's see if they uh, break or if they keep coming. Here they are. The morale level is eight. Plus one for human wave makes it nine. Plus two morale check. Their magic number for each of these guys is seven. Let's roll and see what happens. Rolls a nine, first one fails. 12, casualty reduction. Not only does he fail, but he fails miserably. He will be uh, casually reduced, he will fail. And he rolls a 12, plus two is 14. And anyway, he'll exceed his ELR. So he's gonna be broken down, and it's gonna be bad. And the last guy, ouch, rolls an 11. Uh, passes ELR, so two break. Their ELR is okay. One is a casualty uh, morale check. Let's apply the results. So here's what happened. They fired their firepower of 20, leaves a residual of eight. Half of 20 is 10. Eight is the next column down. Um, two broken full squads, elite, and two, or correction, one broken first line half squad, submachines gun squad. For the Germans, they're not going to let them go. They're going to kick them while they're down. So they're going to fire again. So remembering that the machine gun will not... He doesn't want to fire the machine gun. So there's a total of two squads for eight. Double to 16, half back down to eight. It's going to be an eight plus one attack. Oh, before I roll that, this didn't happen. The sniper. Check to see if the sniper happened. It didn't. Eight plus one attack. <laughs> in this case, no effect. Um, I caught it in time. It's not an A2. We didn't go to the next point. But that's one thing you do, even a gentleman. Even if I rolled as well as I did with a 3 plus 1 to a 4, I'm not doing that. i got to do the sniper first. So the sniper didn't activate. I rolled a 9. And guess what? That's no effect. All right. Let's apply the results and carry on with the movement phase. The counters have been fixed. The... All counters that have green ink on white backgrounds are removed at the end of the movement phase. Any, uh, if, if the defenders had shot and left any uh, covered arcs, that would now remove. And now it's their full defensive fire phase. Anybody marked with final fire cannot shoot. Anybody marked first fire, like these guys here, can only shoot if somebody is adjacent. Nobody is adjacent, so I switch them to final fire. These guys here are broken. They've already first fired. They have nobody around, so they can, nobody adjacent, excuse me, so they can go only to final fire. They're done. These guys, however, we know they have range of fire to them, and they're going to do uh, a shot on them. We mark them with final fire, but before we do so, we're going to lay out here what we've got, and we're going to show you a special type of fire. <clears throat> they're, shooting at two tar they're shooting at a target that's uh, one, two, three, four hexes away, normal range. Notice that the range for both the squad and the heavy machine gun is underlined. This means they can do a special kind of fire called spray fire. They can hit two targets that are adjacent to each other and both within normal range. Basically, they're going to cut their firepower in half and half their firepower in one, half on the other with a single die roll. Over here, we have somebody lower level, upper level adjacent to each other. So they're going to spray fire Lower hex, or sorry, lower location, upper location. Let's figure it out. Four plus seven is 11. Half of 11 is five and a half. So basically it's gonna be firepower four, DRM plus two on each hex. Minus one for leader, plus three for stone building, and it's one single shot. Noting the heavy machine gun's uh, rate of fire is three. We roll the dice. And, ooh, we rolled well. We rolled a three. Three plus two is five on the four column. This four on the one column is a one morale check. They both get hit with a morale check of one. Also note that the machine gun had kept rate. Let's uh, roll for the results. Here's the guys. Well, I'll say he's lower level and he is upper level. Lower level guy. Eight plus one is nine. He breaks morale, passes ELR. Next one, rolls a seven. Seven plus one is eight. They break. Let's apply these guys' results. Notice that the heavy machine gun is not marked with final fire. Ha ha. He can shoot again, and he chooses to this time. He's gonna, well, no, they're not. You know why? Because they're broken guys. 
everybody's broken and firing on broken units only causes bad things. Well, that's my rule of thumb. So that's the end of the final fire phase. Now let's get ready for the advanced fire phase. Now, technically, you're supposed to take the final fire markers off at the end of the uh, defensive fire phase. I leave them on, and it's just me, but the idea is if there's a sniper check, anybody who is already fired uh, can't do a sniper check. Now, everybody is fired, except for that leader, you know what I mean? So, and this guy in here. But anyway, I'm just going to leave them on until now, and that's just for me. Advanced fire phase. And we're going to start off here uh, left to right, as I like to do, these guys. They're going to fire point blank into the lower level just next to them. Now we know that there are three four four sevens for a total of 12. Doubles to 24 for point blank. Halves for advanced fire phase. Plus three for the building. So it's a 12 plus three. He rolls a five. Five plus three is eight. Eight on the 12 column is a one morale check. That's a good shot. Let's a, that's a roll for the results. So here's the guys in the target hex. Uh, as a reminder, one guy was broken. He's under DM. Guy's in good order. Nothing bad. One guy's pinned. We still roll for the uh, the leader first. Plus one morale check for the leader. Nine. Nine plus one is ten. He breaks. The good order squad. Oh. Eleven plus one is twelve. Twelve is five more than seven. They break and the ELR fail. And the broken guy rolls an eight. He fails. So he is actually going to casually reduce out of the game. Let's apply the results. Very good shooting by that platoon that moved in there. Uh, there's now a broken 8-0 leader and uh, a broken half squad with a light machine gun. And the other half machine gun is unpossessed. There are no uh, leader loss task checks or anything because they're all uh, not good order. Uh, the other shots that's going to go on. Let's look over here. Uh, they're going to be firing in uh, point blank over here. So again, we mark them uh, prep fire. There are some advanced fire markers. So I'm going to stick with the official markers right here. So we have three 628 squads. They're going to be shooting point blank into here. And it's going to hit everybody, even their own guy. So uh, when you're doing assault fire, always do it individually. So each one is six, doubles to 12 for point blank, halves back down to six for... Um, uh, for firing the advance phase, plus one for assault fire to seven. There's three of them. Seven times three is 21. So it's going to be firepower 20, DRM plus one. Three for the building and uh, uh, two for the leader. Take away two for the leader. And we roll <laughs> a five. Five plus one is six on the 20 column. This is going to be bad. Six on the 20 column is the blue one on the way over. And there you go. It's a three morale check. Let's uh, roll for the results. Here's the X. Three morale check. Let's do him and then we'll do him. Let's see what happens. German rolls. Nine. Goes to 10, 11, 12. He fails and fails his ELR. And the next guy, seven. Seven plus three. He fails. Uh, ELR is any when they're broken, so he's going to be casually reduced. Let's apply the results. So basically everybody in that hex is uh, broken. We have a broken uh, Soviet half, or sorry, uh, elite half squad and a German second line half squad, all broken in there. Final one is in here. We have uh, three 628s shooting at him, normal range. They have assault fire. Each one is a six uh, divided by two for, or half, I should say, for um, firing an advanced fire phase to a three plus one for assault fire is four. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 up 3 on the guys in the building. Rolls a 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 on the 12 column is a pin task check. Let's roll for the results. little side note here. If snipers were not part of this game, there'd be no need, read to, uh, need to roll for these guys. They can't get into close combat. Nobody's going to be adjacent to them. They're not trying to advance out of there. It's not their turn. But they're snipers. They may roll 6s. Let's see if these guys pin. First guy. Ha! <laughs> Speak of the devil. There's one sniper, and he's fine. The leader's fine, so now everyone pins on a nine. Next one. <laughs> There's two. Two snipers. And the last one. 
is a four. Nobody pins, but there are two sniper possible attacks. First one, four, no effects. And the next one is a two. There is a possibility of a sniper. So the red will be the direction. Direction two for four. Let's go see where he ends up. Reminder, here's the Russian sniper. He activated direction two for four. One, two, three, four. So he ends up in P4. Now he's going to attack the nearest in hexes. We have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put it here. And you're going to say, well, why? I say, well, if it hits the leader, let's have a look at the back. Uh, pin three, K2, no attack. Uh, that doesn't really say anything. All right. Anyway, he's going to go here because if it, if it does select the leader, red will be the leader, then the leader will be wounded. Let's see what happens. Ha! Huh, it doesn't. It just pinned the broken guy. I'm not even going to put that down because it can't, uh, it can't affect him. All right. And that is going to be the end of the advanced fire phase. I'll clear the heck, um, everything and get ready for the route phase. All the markers have been cleared. Uh, there's quite a few DM counters out there, and we're going to get the uh, broken guys in, the easy ones first. Start here with the guy in the bottom. He's going to route back one hex for two movement factors. As a reminder, the leader is there. He's going there for two, and he's going to stop. The guy upstairs, he would love to do that, but if he came over here, he's getting closer to him. Uh, there's no other stairs, you know, except for over here. So he's just going to go back out of line of sight and keep going back over to here. And he's done there, so he went for two and for four. This guy is going to get out of the street, two and four, and he's going to keep going away, so he's going to end up there. I will save on DM counters. Boy, the stacks are getting too high. Next, these guys in the street here, they are going to try to get away, and they're going to go back into the stone building. They're going to go as far as here, and they're going to stop. Now we've got these guys here. And here, if they want to get away, they're going to have to move in the open and in normal range of good order units. He would have to go either here, maybe zapped by them. If they were pinned, he could have got away. If he would go here, he's in the normal range of him. They're adjacent. Uh, he's not. He can low crawl. He's adjacent to him. He can break. But this guy here, he decides he's going to low crawl into the street here. I'm going to take him away. Got my own guy. He doesn't start adjacent to anybody. He can low crawl in the open. Watch out for falling uh, counters. These guys are going to have to surrender to him. And the, the German says, I'm going to take the prisoner. Let's apply the results. Here's the end result of what happened. Each full squad that surrendered is replaced by a generic uh, three... Uh, person prisoner of war and the half squad with that and they just remove it doesn't matter who they are anymore because if they do come back they come back as conscripts i said well these are all half squads now what happened so well this full squad took that full squad prisoner and immediately deployed for free as you're allowed to even russians can do that the other squad took the remainder he took possession of them and deployed so we have two half squads that are split off. He's possessing the light machine gun. He's got him. He's got all of them. And you think, well, that's maybe too many. So well, it's not. Remember, their unit size is two. They can carry up to five times their prisoners. So five times two is ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the plan will be to transfer these guys to them. These guys will run away, and you'll end up with two and a half squads. Why do you want more half squads? Well, sometimes you want more half squads. And also, it's a great way to show how this can be done just by doing a video on YouTube, as I'm doing. All right, let's apply these results into the hex. Now it's time for the Germans to break their guys. They have a couple guys here. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to, uh, well, they have to get away. Because there are some enemy units that are adjacent, and they're going to have to try to run away. So these guys are going to try to come this way. And they can, well, they can't go here because they're still adjacent, right? So they're going to leave the building they're in, uh, maybe be in line of sight of them, maybe not. They're going to say no, they're not, and they're going to go to this building. 
it's here for one and for three and he's done. This guy can go here or he can choose to leave the building. He's going to leave the building and go back with him. Get rid of the extra DM counter and we're done. The route phase is over. It's time to advance. Of course, it's not done. Over here, we have some guys that are going to DM, uh, that are DM, and they're just going to go back one hex to here. There's a stairwell, and they're actually going to go up a level. So they're going to move back here for two and up a level for three. And they're going to end their uh, route phase there. I'll apply that now. There, now it's done. Remember, there is an unpossessed light machine gun down there. Time for the Russians to advance. Here's the results of the advance phase. Nothing happened over here. They just stayed where they were. In here, two squads went upstairs, and now they are actually point-blank adjacent to these guys. In here, uh, the leader came back to here. He's going with the broken guys to try to rally them. The uh, platoon split up and took over these two buildings here, and he moved into there. The final part to happen for this, uh, well, that's it for the advanced phase. Now it's a close combat phase. There is no close combat. The last thing is to see if there's any concealment gains. And there is only, oh, well, there aren't any actually. Uh, you check to see if anybody is has line, of, if anybody has no line of sight to them. You know, if they have line of sight to them, these guys are all seen by him, upper and lower, as well as the guy upstairs. I'm talking only Russians here, of course. They're point blank to them. They can see them. So that's it. Now let's have a final summation and talk about what happened. This is only the first Soviet uh, player turn is done. And already you can see that quite a bit has happened and quite a bit different from the original squad leader. Over here we saw the effects of, uh, of uh, prep fire over here not having much effect, much like the original game. But you can see they were actually spread out a lot more over here. In here he was able to fire not once but several times by maintaining rate of fire. Uh, causing some effects here before shifting fire to here. We saw the effects of the sniper taking him out, clearing up this road here so that they could come across and then eventually get a whole platoon into the center building here. Finally, we saw a human wave attack come through here with mixed results. The left and right wing of the attack ended up getting shattered with many of the men ending up as prisoners of war. Uh, on the left wing, the Soviet left wing as it came in, there, most of them are back in the building. But as a result of that human wave, we end up with a total of six German, or sorry, Russian squads in one of these buildings here. A total of nine squads have made it across the street successfully. Now it's up to the Germans in their phase to see what they can do. Okay, the aim of this was just to show some of the differences between squad leader and advanced squad leader using the same scenario. I hope you enjoyed. Please feel free to leave comments below.